welcome to yet another video of Core from Scratch. So proud of you for showing up today. Today we are going to do a question with Amazon interview experience hack and it's a medium level question but I know most of you can do it yourself. While doing the question I want you to pause and think and come up with the solution yourself. I want you to tell me in the comments that yeah, you were able to think of all the edge cases. You were able to know yourself that okay how are we going to do it. I am just here to give you that push but I know Based on all the questions that we have done so far, you can do this question. It's not so hard. So if you were to give an Amazon interview and this question was asked, you would be able to do it. I am sure it is just that you have to push yourself a bit. So let me know in the comments if you were able to come up with a solution yourself or not. Let's get started. So this is the question given to us. We are given a string and we have to find the permutation with spaces. See the minute details you have to notice over here. You don't have to arrange the elements of the string itself. You know, you don't have to arrange the characters. What do you have to arrange? You have to arrange the spaces between the characters. See, when you are asked to find permutations of a string, you are arranging the characters in the string. Like it was like C, B, A, P, A, C, like that, right? Here, it is always A, B, C only. But what is happening? We are arranging the spaces. So you can see that it is given that strings can be made by placing spaces 0 or 1 in between them. So it is in between them. So if you notice in the output, there is no space be before A or after C. It is in between the characters. So it will be either between A and B or between B and C. But it is not before A or after C. Right. So that is where you have to notice that okay, it means in between them. And 0 or 1 means you can either put up one space or not put up one space. And if you understand this much itself, you can understand the entire question. We have actually done such questions earlier. What do we have to do? We have to either put up one space or we don't have to put up one space. And that is all we have to do. There are many, many ways to write the solution of this question. But the important point is this, that at every element, we have two options. Either we will put up a space or we will not put up a space. I want you to draw the recursive tree and recursive stack because I know you will be able to do it. I am not going to do it. I know you can understand from the code itself now. What are we going to do? So there is A, B, C. We are going to start from A. And then after putting A, say before putting B, there are two options. Either we put up the space or we don't put up the space. If we don't put up the space, these are the solutions. And if we put up the space, these are the solutions, right? So when we put A, we don't have to put up the space before A. And we don't have to put up the space after C, right? So let's start writing and let's see how can we do it. Okay, so we have to return a vector of strings. So all the possible strings we have to push in a vector. So I'm going to first form the vector over here. We are going to call it RES and this is what we will be returning also. Okay, now I'll obviously be writing a recursive function. So I am calling it helper itself. What all do we need to pass? We need to pass the index at which we are in the string. We will also have a present string, a current string that we will be dealing with. And once we have, we are done forming the string, we are going to push it to our vector, right? So we also need a current string that we are going to work with this particular string. Also the string that was given to us, let's just call it S itself. And the vector that we had, we are going to push it. We are going to pass it because we need to make changes to it, okay? So again, I'm passing by reference because I'm going to be making changes to this, right? See now while writing the code, there are two ways to do it. Either we can be putting space before the index element that we're dealing with or after the index element. So it is one of the two possibilities. So we either, either we can start a recursive function from the zeroth one or we can start on the first one. So how I am going to write is I'm going to form a current string over here. So I'm going to add the first element over here itself. Okay. And then I'm going to call, call the helper function. So what I will do is in this helper, I will add the space before adding the index because what will happen? So I've already added the zeroth one. Now I will either add the first element after putting a space or without putting a space. So here I'm making sure that, okay, the first element is always there. Another thing to note over here, see in the constraints, it is already given to us that the length is at least one always. If this was not given to us, if it can start from like zero also, then I will have to put up a check over here to see that, okay, can I have this S of zero or not? Say the string is empty, then obviously I can't call S of zero, right? So if I am calling that, I have to check the constraints also. Otherwise I have to put up a check, right? If it's not clear right now, don't worry at all. It will be completely clear. So till now, what have I done? I have formed an empty string. And to that, I have always added the first element of a string. Now, what am I going to do when I call my helper? I'm going to start from the index one. And then I'm going to pass the current string. I'm going to pass the string that I was given. 
and I'm going to pass this areas. Okay. And now over here, all I have to do is I have to either include space or not include space. So there are two possibilities, right? One will be include space. So when I include space, what happens? I will first of all call for next index only. So I'll pass index plus one. Now my new current, what will happen when I have to include the space, I will just add a space and then I will include the character at index. See here when I say include, I am not including the character, I am including a space. This S of index we will always include it because see all the characters that are there in the string, we always have to include them. When I say include and exclude cases, what am I saying? Either include the space or don't include the space. So here I am including a space before adding this character. Okay. So this is how I am calling it. So this is, this will be the new current that I will pass the next time. I will pass the string at as, as it is and I will pass the RS. Right. So this is the case where I am including the space. The next case will be when I am excluding what space. I will still include the character. What am I doing? I am excluding the space. See, these are the small variations of the same question. Earlier we were dealing with include the character, exclude the character. Here what are we dealing? We are just including the space, excluding the space. So let's call the next helper function. Again here we will call for the next index. What will be our new current like? So here we will just add the index as it is. How will our current look like? So here we are not going to include the space. We are going to include the index only. So here I'm just adding the character at index. I'm just passing it to the next recursive call. I will pass the string and I will pass alias, right? So I have written two cases, include and exclude. What else do we have to write in the recursive function? Yes, the base condition basically where we will stop. Where will we stop? We will stop when we are done with the entire string, right? When will we be done with the entire string? when index will become equal to n. What was our n? It is string size. We are not passing it. So instead of passing it, we can calculate it over here itself. Another way would have been that I calculate it and pass it. Okay. So instead of that, I am doing it here itself. So if this is the case, that means I have my entire string that can be pushed to the vector. So I'm going to push it over here and I'm going to return. Okay. Few things to note over here. First thing is that I am adding the space before adding the character. Okay. So we have to check, we have to be sure that, okay, we are not adding any space after adding C, that is after the last element. If suppose instead of adding the first character, we were calling from index zero and we were adding the space afterwards, then we would have to make sure that, okay, we stop our uh, recursion at N minus one instead of N itself. So that we are sure that we don't add any space after adding the last character. So these will be the small tweaks and different ways in which people will write code. So I recommend you that try writing the code in that way also. Here what have we done? We are adding the first character and then we are adding space before adding our uh, characters at index, right? Instead of that, what you could have done, instead of calling a recursive function from one, we could have called a recursive function from zero and we could have added spaces after S of index. In that case, we would have to stop a recursion at n minus one instead of stopping at n. See, draw the recursive rate, draw the recursive stack and it will be completely clear. Let's first compile this and see whether this works or not. Oh, sorry, I've written res.push. It should be res.push back. Sorry for that. So this works. Let's submit and see. I was not able to do the visualization, but I'm sure at least some of you might need it. So if you were not able to understand it yourself, you were not able to visualize the entire thing yourself. I want you to let me know in the comments, which is the exact part that you're struggling with so that I can help you with that in the future videos. I want you to be able to solve these questions yourself by now because we have done so many questions already. Okay. So this is the string that is given to us ABC before calling the function itself. What did we do in our current? We just pushed A. And then after pushing A, what did we do? We called our helper function for index equal to one. That is we were at B. Now for index equal to one, we had two options either in our current, how will we push? We will push A space B or we will just push A B. And then we will move to index equal to two. Now when we push index equal to two, again, here there are two options. We had A space B. Now we can either add space and then add C or we can just add C as it is. 
here also there are two options we can add space and then add c or we can add c here itself right so these are the possibilities here we see that okay we have reached n minus 1 so these are the possibilities after this we will see that okay we have reached our n and this is where we can return and add this to our res now i hope it is clear if it is not let me know which part is not clear so that i can help you i wanted to be able to do the questions yourself okay we will be doing a harder question tomorrow so do show up i'll wait for you okay done